Yo, Elliot, it's been a while since I've last checked in. My latest baby boy was born on November 28th. That's my wife's birthday, by the way. It's so interesting. Um, I'm, ask, I'm writing to ask today about loss of motivation for the program. I haven't been checking into the weekly lessons for the past five weeks or so. I know I've had more on my plate getting ready for the baby and now dealing with him. But I'm also, cons uh, I'm also certain I could be doing the work if I felt more desire. So I'm asking today about what you suggest when you start to see kings fall off. And if you have anything specific for the fact that now I have three kids and uh, time for me is just a bit tighter. So first of all, congratulations on your new baby boy. That's incredible. I love the fact that you know, you're a patriarch, right? And so that's something I'm going to be talking a bit more about in the coming weeks and months. And that is about the importance of strong alpha male fathers and patriarchs as a means for bringing our world back into the light. So you, my friend, are a part of that. And it is really your primary vocation, the most important thing that you're ever going to do in your life, more so than any career that you do, any school that you do, any program that you embark upon. The Lord will ask you to be accountable for what you did with your children, right? He's not gonna ask you, oh, did you do a good job trading stocks or cryptos? Hey, did you go to every single one of Elliot's King Transformation classes? He's not gonna ask you any of that. He's gonna say, what happened to your kid here? What happened to this child? Did you, why weren't you available for him? Or, congratulations, you did an incredible job fulfilling your vocation as a father did a great job with your children. So in a way, I'm sort of answering your questions by helping you, number one, recognize priorities. <laughs> it is a priority to be doing the damn thing rather than thinking about the damn thing. And so that also brings me to my second point that I want to make to you. And that is, well, first of all, there are seasons. And we've talked about various macro and micro seasons in our life. But there's one that's very, it's very, um, it's, it's just... You're on or you're off. You're in or you're out. And it is about consumption or production. There, you can't do both. You can't consume and produce at the same time, right? I know this is going to sound like a facetious, strange uh, analogy, but you, you don't eat and poop at the same time. You don't eat and then it becomes poop. Your body has to process it, right? You put the food in your mouth. You got to chew it up. You got to digest it, assimilate it, make it a part of your body. And then that which is left over, right, is is what you produce, right? It was just poop or energy if you're using it. The point is, it doesn't happen at the same time. Same thing. You plant a seed and it takes time for it to grow. So you can't plant the seed and expect it to grow at the same time. You, my man, are now currently, and you'll be coming in and out of seasons of production. That means when you have to do something. That means when you ha there's no more time for thinking, there's no more time for reading, there's no more time for learning. Really, there's a, there's a time when learning ceases. Not forever, but cyclically. So you've reached a point in a particular micro cycle in your life where consumption needs to be curbed because production is what's required. Prior to your son coming, you maybe had more time. And listen, I know you say that I feel like I could be doing more work if I felt more desire, but energy is, it, it, energy is just as poignant as time. Just because you have the time to do something doesn't mean that you have the energy to do something. Now you say motivation, but what, what, what does motivation require? Well, energy, right? Think about the word motivation, right? It almost sounds like motor, right? Like the motor in a car. Your motor, the, the motivation that a man feels is like the motor in a car. Well, a motor in a car won't run unless it has what? Energy. And the same thing with the motivation in a man. You might not have the energy. Why? Because, well, you might be staying up later. You might be dealing with your wife and the other children. You're, you, there's a whole lot of emotional, mental, spiritual uh, production, right, of energy that you're, that you're projecting or using towards this new end in your life, right, which is a new baby. So, listen, I don't know. I'm a little different than a lot of guys and I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't know. But I don't expect my students to be spot on, on the ball, 100% all the time. I really don't. I don't think it's plausible, and I don't think it's necessary. And so I would have you avoid feeling any guilt 
about not being 100% consuming the program, right? Because that's what it is. Essentially, what you're doing with me is you're consuming. Now, I do ask you to produce some, you know, there's some homework. There's some things that you want to implement and try out in your life. But the bottom line is you're learning. There are seasons of learning and there are seasons of doing. There are seasons of consuming and there are seasons of producing. And you have to honor them. You can't judge them. You can't fight them. You just got to go with the flow, bro. So that's essentially what you're doing. And I think there's nothing wrong with it. I just based on my own, just, just my life. I used to beat myself up like you do, right? Like you're doing right now, but I've grown in wisdom. And I realized, oh, if there's a certain thing that wanes in my life for a season, it doesn't mean it's over. It just means I need to set this down for a little while, but guaranteed it's gonna come back. When I was younger and I re realized that like, I don't have the motivation or I'm just, you know, I don't have the time or I really don't feel called to do a particular thing that I know I love. I know I love this and I know that I want to cultivate this thing, I just can't do it right now. And I used to beat myself up. I used to feel guilty. Like, oh man, I, I want to do everything. Now I just, I, I recognize it and I honor it. And I'm like, oh, well, like, so for example, reading for me, I go in and out of reading. I, there are times when I am a voracious reader and I can't stop buying books. and I can't stop reading books. And I'm just like anxious about reading. I'm consuming, I'm consuming, I'm consuming. In fact, I'm, that's where I am right now. I'm in a consuming. I got all these, I got all these books around me. I'm buying books left and right. <laughs> right, because I'm in a consuming season right now. But for the past six months, right, prior to November, producing, bro, I hadn't picked up a book and read a book in, in four, five, six months. Somebody from the outside might be like, wow, look at Elliot, what a, uh, what a hypocrite. I'm just telling people it's a good idea to read, but he doesn't even read. Well, because it's not a season for reading for me right now. That season will come back, and I know it does. And so I'll leave you with that last piece, dude, when something leaves you, right, something that's significant in your life wanes, don't be so worried about it because it's going to come back. It will come back. So many aspects of your life, even now that you're in a child bearing and child rearing season in your life, right, you got three children, a newborn on the way, I would venture to say that your relationship with your wife has been profoundly different since the season of giving birth, right? There's a time when the babies are small, the babies are, your wife is pregnant, she's nursing, she's changing diapers, cleaning up vomit. And so the relationship between husband and wife begins to wane, you might say. Some people allow it to be strained, but it's none of these things. It's a matter of seasons. Well, it's a season. It's a season for us to be doing these things and being this particular way and it's going to come to an end soon this too shall pass everything shall pass so as far as your contribution or your inclusion into the program number one have no guilt number two i will not press that upon you because i understand that life happens in seasons and number three the seasons for consumption the season for learning the season for jumping back in two feet to the king transformation program will show itself again to you. And that's a part of the reason why I don't, uh, I don't necessarily have a time limit on extracting people from the program. I, have, I had guys that were here for two years. I had guys that were here uh, six months, they were hardcore, stepped off, fell off, forgot. Life reminded them, hey, dude, you might wanna pay attention to what Elliot's saying again over here or the lessons that you learned. And then you know what they do? They go through the program again. They go through the program again. They jump up the program. They jump up on the calls and everything's cool. And the same will be for you, dude. So roll with the punches, go with the flow. Keep growing stronger, bro. And you're going to be okay, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.